Hey, welcome to the CT Sports Town Show. My name is Chris Saunders. I'm pleased to have on with me two Staples Rectors as they will be giving a preview for the football squad. I have uh, Nathan Smith with me. Nathan, say hello. What's up? And then Shane Sandrews is also with me. Say hello as well. Hello. You know, it's awesome to be able to have you guys here. I know Matt was telling me about kind of, you know, and I mentioned it in my tweet too, as far as there's a long lineage of wide receivers that come through Staples. And obviously it's kind of like, when you think about like the factories of sports, right? Ohio State seems to bring out a lot of wide receivers, defensive ends, Alabama. It's, you know, obviously the quarterbacks and again, cornerbacks, D-backs, you know, defensive backs, et cetera. Um, Staples has that in terms of the high school level with wide receivers. And I'll go to, to Nate first. Seeing that, and I'm sure you watch games before you even entered, you know, Staples at the high school level. Um What's it been like as far as knowing that you're next in line as far as with that? Yeah, I think it's – we have it all starts with the coaching, and we have Coach Matt, who's, like, I think the best uh, wide receiver coach in the state. I don't think anyone gets better than that, than mm -hmm. him. And, you know, he trains everyone from sophomore to senior. So when we had guys like Tyler Clark and James Hillhouse doing these drills, me and Shane, as sophomores, were still doing the drills with them. So we are – you know, in training, like we've been training with him since sophomore year and we've just gotten better and better all the way up to senior year. Shane, same question for you, but the only tweak I'm going to ask is with all the talent that you saw ahead of you, right? I mean, do you think in a lot of ways it kind of helped kind of taking a step back per se and watching, you know, you mentioned Hill House and Clark and so on, and there's been so many others that you can kind of pick up some of the little things, the fine nights to the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. James and Tyler, I, I got the opportunity to play with them, and it was a really big privilege for me. Mm -hmm. And it was, they they kind of took me under their wing and showed me, like, the ins and outs of, like, the basics of being a receiver. And I know both of them led in two different, very, like, two different ways. But at the same time, they kind of helped foster me, and, like, I wouldn't be the player I would be today if it wasn't for them, too. And they definitely just helped me out like through my career. I'll stay with Shane here. Now, I kind of want to reflect on last season. Obviously, it was a season to remember. Um, just kind of tell me, you know, just going through all of that, right? I mean, real quick, just give me a quick reflection if you can, because it was a great yeah. year, obviously. I mean, week one, we, we kind of, I would honestly say we let the media get to us and kind of hype us up a little bit. And it, it kind of went to our head and we, we went out onto the field week one and just thought, you know, we were that team. Mm -hmm. And we, to be honest, got killed. And then from that, that point on, we developed a, a killer mentality and mm -hmm. just kind of rode the wave throughout the season up until the state championship. Nate, do you feel like in some ways, not to say it's great to lose by any means, but you'd rather have a week one loss than having maybe a loss late in the season and then licking your wounds and then going into the playoff if you have the opportunity, right? And then you're kind of still thinking about, you know, it gave basically what I'm saying is it gave you time to work on the stuff that you needed to, which sounded like the biggest thing was maybe kind of felt yourself a little bit too much as a group rather than going back to the laboratory. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I would I would definitely say it was so beneficial for us to have that first loss, even though you don't want to have a loss, but for us, like yeah. we thought we were going to go in there and we win every game. And it was kind of a wake up call for us. Like we're not, we're not that team. Like we need, we need to do better. We need to change things. And after that week, we changed a lot of things. And obviously the results were amazing for us as we went on to win 12 straight. And it was, and it really, I don't think that would have been possible. Like the state championship wouldn't have been possible without that first loss. I'll stick with Nate here. And then, you know, I'll go to Shane next. Nate, talk to me about as the seconds are winding down, you know, five, four, three, two, one, obviously four zeros come up. You guys are champions, right? Talk to me kind of what was your first, first thought? I don't care what it was. What was your first thought? I mean, I was just so happy and joyful. Like all, everything that we put into, you mm -hmm. know, full season practice, getting up early at 615 to lift, like everything we worked for blood, sweat, tears was all, came to the result that we, our final goal, which was to win the state championship. And I was so happy. I remember I went over and I gave, like the first person I hugged was Charlie Leahy, one of my best friends, uh, another captain. 
you know, we, we said like, we did it, like we, we did it. Um, and it was great. It was like one of the best feelings of my life. Shane, same question. Um, for me, it was kind of surreal. I, I felt a lot of like immense pride in being able to kind of honor the, the senior class and kind of help them achieve like a dream as being a senior is kind of leaving and winning the state championship as your last game. And it's just pure joy for me. Now, as we look at the new year, 2024, it's a new season, obviously expectations on, you know, I mean, we saw North Haven, they go back to back. They have a chance for a three P you guys have an opportunity to be able to go back to back as well. What's it been like? I know you were telling me the numbers have been very good. Obviously kids have vacations. It is the summer, but obviously things have been able to go well and it sounds like the turnout's been good. What's the energy been like? I mean, I know Shane, you were telling me how you guys felt yourselves well, maybe a little bit too much in week one and you got woken up early. Do you think now going through that and obviously you get the title, try not to have that happen again this year? Yeah, I think our coaches have really been harping on just kind of just to stay like a committed mindset and a focused mindset and not just to get too high. Like we talk about defending the crown a lot and it's a just a big thing for us. Like we we just are kind of coming together as a team and just mm -hmm. it's a great really. Yeah. Nay, I'm going to ask you, as far as, you know, the FCAC is very, very tough for obvious reasons. New Canaan, St. Joe's, the Ariane, you know, I could go on and on and on with, the, you know, Greenwich as well. Um, now with you guys having won the title, obviously there has been teams in the FCAC who have won, and you could say that they have like a target or they have all eyes on them. Well, now you guys being a part of that as well, teams are going to give you, I mean, I'm sure they did before, but now there's more incentive because they want to take down the champion, right? They want to take your crown, at least in their eyes. Um, has that been talked about all during the off season? Yeah, we're, we're always going to, we've been talking about this whole summer that there's going to be a target on our backs. Like people are making us, their like new Canaan made us their homecoming. And, you know, wow. we like, we are, we know that we are always going to want it more no matter what. So mm -hmm. we're not worried with that. We're just going to give it our best every single game. Now, you and I, or not you and I, but both of you were kind of talking with me as far as kind of some of the some of the, the, the talent that has come back, right? I'll go to Nate first. Who's been some of the standouts early on? Yeah, we have uh, Eddie Vandermeer, uh, one of our old linemen. He's doing amazing. And then we have Davis Crandall, linebacker, Cody Goldman, linebacker. Those two are going to be a problem for any offense this year. Mm -hmm. uh, those three off the, off the top of my mind are unbelievable and then we also have charlie Leahy as well who is a big d end and he had an amazing season last year he's gonna have an even better season this year um yeah and then like you said our our quarterback our incoming quarterback nick weil has doing a great job so far this summer mm -hmm. and he has uh, some shoes to fill but he's been doing a great job shane is there a particular position or positions that not to say is a, of a concern because it's so early in the camp but more so just maybe there's a little bit of youth, maybe an experience and that just basically just have to get their feet wet and just get things going. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, there is an answer of uh, the O line and the D line, but I have trust in the captains and the player leaders to just mm -hmm. really take a lead and kind of teach them the ropes, mm -hmm. but I'm not really worried about it in the sense of they're going to be struggling or anything like that. They're, they're hardworking kids and they know how to get it done. I'll stick with Shane here. Obviously, we talked about the lineage of wide receivers and such, knowing that you guys are next in line. And what comes with that is obviously expectation, pressure. Obviously, all eyes will be on you even more now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. how has that been from a psychological standpoint, a mental standpoint? Have you been kind of thinking about that if you're sitting at home or if you're watching, if you guys are into baseball or into whatever you guys are watching, right? Is that something where – you're kind of thinking, kind of game planning and going through the reps in your head as you would if you were taking reps in practice. Yeah. Um, so it, it definitely does have its pressures and, and does have its impacts, but I'd say our coaches and Coach Maddie in specific kind of helps us manage that. Okay. And I know like as a team, we kind of build goals and micro goals. And instead of focusing on like this stat line or that stat line, we focus on like littler things like winning the sprints at conditioning mm -hmm. and kind of helps us prepare ourselves for the season in a more calm way than 
what am I going to have to do in this game? It's just the next step, one step at a time. Nate, same question. Yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, like he said, like focusing on the little things is really important because our macro goals, like we make macro and micro goals for every single person. So the macro goal is win a championship, but the micro goals are things that you could do to, you know, get to that macro goal. So like he said, you know, trying to gain weight if your goal is to gain weight and gain muscle like get in the gym you know if it's to get more in shape to keep conditioning you know those types of micro goals are really important for every single person to have i'll stick with nate here you know as this season i mean it's going to come up quick and then it's like a marathon right before you know it it's thanksgiving and then christmas and then the whole nine it's like it flies by but it's so much fun um when you look at this season and i know shane talked about obviously the goals with the sprints and such you know the little things what kind of goals have you set for yourself as an individual? Um, a goal that I've set is, uh, for me personally, is to, uh, you know, be an all-state receiver. And I think that my way, so that's my macro goal. And then the ways that I could do that, my goal this spring was to gain 15 pounds of muscle, hopefully. And um, I've I've done that and, you know, I just need to keep doing my mac my micro goals to get to that macro goal of going off state. But that's me as an individual. But like I said earlier, mm -hmm. team goal uh, cumulative is uh, to win a state championship again, defend the crown. Shane, same question. Um, So personally, I don't, I didn't set my goals to be stats or accolades. I set them to be just check marks in the process. And I kind of like to see it all fall into place. I know I kind of struggled with stats and accolades focusing on that last year and it didn't work out for me. So really? like one of my goals this year was to be one of the strongest receivers in the weight room, one of the fastest receivers in the weight room. Mm -hmm. So for that, for my goal to accomplish that's consistency and eating right. And I've just been, I've been focusing on that instead of more accolades and stats. I'll stick with Shane here. You talked about kind of eating right, you know, preparing the body and the mind and such. What have you been doing? Because I know once the season starts, obviously with practice and homework and everything else, it's sometimes you kind of stray away from that, right? So do you think the stuff that you've been doing, you can kind of keep with that once the season begins? Yeah, so I, I think it's a good time to bring up our strength and conditioning coach, Coach Drew. I mean, he is like the best in the business. Okay. Like our strength plan, and he gives us a nutrition plan or has – yeah. It kind of helps us and basically carves out what we need to do. And it's, it, it works. I mean, along with the coaches and the accountability from player leaders, we have to weigh in, we have to track our weight. So, I mean, it, it really is, I wouldn't say easy because you need discipline to do it, but it's really set up for you to, to succeed. I'm going to stick with Shane again, really quick here. You, the way that you made that sound kind of sounded like almost like a, almost like it's like college ran almost, right? I mean, I don't typically see that where I broadcast in the NVL. I mean, there may be some teams that have the ability, but it sounds like you guys are taking it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we know that that being strong is a huge advantage. Being fast is a huge advantage. And Coach Drew puts us in a position to obtain the advantage i mean I, I don't really know if there's anything else to say about that our players take it really seriously our mm -hmm. coaches take it really seriously and it's it's one of the most important things in our program well i really appreciate you both coming on this was a lot of fun before i let you both go one more question for each of you nate specifically um obviously you're not going to be looking week eight week nine week ten because you're focusing on basically who you guys have week one um once things kind of fully go underway and they're official and the pads and the helmet and the whole nine, what's the mindset going to be each and every day? You kind of talked about defending the crown. Is there anything else? Yeah, I think it's just for every single person to get better every single day. Mm -hmm. So whether, whether that's you take away something every single day from practice, because we're learning new things all the time. So we have meetings before practice. So if there's anything, we, we have notebooks so that ev everyone has a notebook so that they can write down things that uh, they can that they learn and they can use in the practice and in the games. So mm -hmm. I think that it's really important for everyone on this team, no matter if you're the top guy or the bottom guy, to every single person to get better at what their job is every single day. Shane, same, same question for you, but adding in, 
being teammates with obviously Nate and kind of being able to be now on this journey together, right? And obviously with the rest of your team, but specifically with now the next group of wide receivers. Talk to me about how that's going to be like this year, because I I think that's going to be a fun experience for the both of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely super fun, like to play with Nathan and the rest of the receiver room. And I know Nathan and I, this isn't towards later in the practice, but like the whole year kind of have just taken like responsibility to lead the younger group of receivers, kind of like James and Tyler did for us and kind of harp on the selflessness it takes to play receiver and the blocking it takes to play receiver, not the flashy play, not anything like that. It's, it's the gritty, the gritty play to take receiver. And Nathan and I have been doing an excellent job kind of instilling that in the younger group of receivers. Yeah, to add on on that real quick, I just want to say that me and Shane, uh, even though we help the younger guys, we also make each other better every every day by competing against each other all the time. So whether it's a conditioning sprint where we're pushing each other to get better, we want to make each other better every mm -hmm. single day. Who typically wins the uh, – if you guys are going up against each other, who typically wins? Definitely me. So you have the better route tree per se? Shane's got to work on it a little bit. Is that right? <laughs> um. <laughs> Tony say that because I think it's actually dead even. It's it's oh, dead. We are scarcely yeah. even in the weight room, actually. Like every single time that he hits a PR, I hit the same PR with the same weight. It's kind of scary actually that how similar we are, but it's it's pretty cool to say because that happened this morning, actually. <laughs> but that's great. a good thing though, because it pushes the both of you to the yeah. The basically squeeze out everything out of the toothpaste tube that you can squeeze out all that talent, right? I mean, why not? I, I told him, I said, if because Shane went first and he got his PR up, I was like, I told him after I did it because I got it up too. I said, I probably I may not have got it if I didn't see you do it and give me that motivation before. So it's great that we push each other so much and we get each other better all the time. So there you go. I mean, hey, it's like long lost brother almost, except you're not blood related, but still, seriously though, right? I mean, that kind of stuff when you think about winning a championship going back to back the things like that the small things that maybe don't get reported by the media or don't get talked about is kind of a crucial thing having guys push each other right watching for one another like it seems like obviously you guys have a great structure at staples but that this right here is kind of a little bit of that of how you win titles in a row let alone titles in general you know what i mean oh, yeah for yeah. sure so, but hey, I really appreciate you both coming on. Best of luck this season. Hopefully I see you guys at some point down the road. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Thank you for having us. Always, always. I'll wrap things up here in the CT Sports Town Show. So next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. Enjoy, find them all. Enjoy the show, everybody. Be well.